to me. I didn't come. Okay, because I was like at 102 temperature all day Saturday. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. So here's the part. So look, here's the biggest thing that you have to understand. All we're doing is so that we're using a graph to describe what happens. Okay? That's all we're doing. Don't overcomplicate this. So think this through. And, and, and if you start at the beginning, because if your beginning is wrong, everything else is screwed. So was the initial velocity of the cart zero when we started the analysis? No. No. Was it a positive number? Yes. 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 Is it going to be relatively a big positive number relative to, to the entire thing, or a small positive number relative to the entire trip? Big. 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 Why? Because it's the biggest. The That's as fast as it's going to go. This is as fast as it's ever going to go is at the beginning. It's never going to go any faster. Although, I remember, is this what you were third block or first block? had a group that had like it speeding up as it rolled. I thought that was kind of cool. So here's the deal. Here's your velocity time graph, right? And your position time graph, right? So here's the most important thing. You know at time zero, it's going to have some positive velocity. You know that. As it rolls, what's it going to do? Slow down. Slow down. So what is this line going to do? Do like, like this. Now, here's the problem. For 12 years, you all have been taught to connect the dots on a graph. You do x, y, x, y, and you connect the dots. Okay? And, and in a pure academic setting, that works. But let me give you a hint. In the reality of science, economics, predictions of business curves, models, whatever, you have to work with imprecise data. And you have to extrapolate the graph and say, okay, what actually happened? Because in reality, you're not going to have exact points of data when you do your jobs. Okay? If you're a market analyst for trading coffee beans, you're going to have to extrapolate some data. You, if you're trading energy, okay, a couple of my students that work down in Houston, literally, they trade natural gas or they trade electricity. Guess what? You don't have exact points on a dot. You have to look at that data and interpret it. No one is going to pay you $80,000 a year to do X and Y points on a graph and connect the dots. It's not going to happen. You're going to, they, they're going to ask you to figure out, we've got some missing dots. What do we do with the missing dots? That's what you've got to figure out. So you've got to get out of this mindset that everything in life is going to be black and white. You're going to have situations where you just kind of got to think your way through it. And the sooner you get to that point and get out of this idea that, oh, I just got, I've got these points and that's all I can do is connect the dots. Let me give you a hint. If all you have to do is connect the dots, we're going to develop a computer program that's going to do your job. It's code hard reality of it. Okay? So you've got to figure out the missing dots. So think about this. The time zero, that's when you're going fastest. Oh, okay. I don't know what that point is. You're right. You don't know what that point is. But you know that's going to be the highest point on the graph. Now, the car's rolling along, rolling along, right? You're going to have some velocity vectors pointing in this direction. What's going to happen to these velocity vectors as they roll? Get smaller. Slow. A lot smaller? No. 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 Why? Because there's just a little bit of friction. Okay? What? They're going to get smaller. And they're just not at a rapid rate. So this graph is just going to roll, roll and roll, roll and roll, right? Now, it hits the wall. What's going to happen to the velocity vectors? They're going to get really small. Really small. Really quickly? Yeah. Yes. So they're going to go from yay to yay. Really, really quickly. Now, here's the other thing. You all did your pre-lab graphs. Why do you think I had you draw the pre-lab graphs? To compare our data. So that you knew what your graph should look like. Okay? Literally. That's why I had you do them. So that was the whole point. So you could go and look and go, oh man, does my graph look like the pre-lab graphs that Burkamp signed off on? If they don't look like that, guess what? You did something wrong. Okay? So 
The other thing that y'all are going to have to get used to, but especially those of, you, those of you that are going off to college next year, the KU, K-State, the big schools, where you're going to be sitting in lecture halls with, you know, two, three hundred people. The professor is not going to hold the hand of all three hundred of you. You've got to be able to figure out stuff on your own. And so when, from a teacher's perspective, you, you have to get, in, get into the head of the teacher. Wow, why did Burkamp have us draw those velocity time graphs? And why, why was he so picky about those? Ah, oh, maybe that's what he wants our graphs to look like. So view the situation from, from my perspective. Ah, oh, right, I bet my velocity time graph should probably look like what we had drawn. And if they don't, mm, maybe something's wrong. Now, here's the most important single point of data that you need on this graph. Find the time at the end when it hit the wall, okay? Your two elapsed time. So let's say your first time was like, I don't know, 1.60, uh, no, let's make the first one like 1.40, and then the second one was 1.60, okay? So those are your two first intervals. I'm just making up numbers. Okay? So you add those together, you get three. So if these were my two time intervals, here's the most important thing I'm going to look at. Here's the first thing I'm going to look at when I go to grade this. I'm going to find the three second mark, and that's when this graph should be at its relative maximum. Okay? That's the first thing I'm going to look at. So you find the sum of those two first intervals. That's when this graph has to be at its maximum because that's when that thing is three meters away. Okay, that's the most first thing I'm going to look at. Then I'm going to come down here to your velocity time graph. And at that point in time is exactly when your line has to cross through three seconds. Okay? So that literally, I'm going to go to here, I'm going to find this mark. I'm going to go to here, and then that is exactly when that three when, when my data, it would be at exactly three seconds. That's when that velocity time graph has to cross through zero. Okay? There, there's no, there, that is the absolute home run data point that you need. Now, then in your calculations, I tell you, it takes about that long for the plunger to compress store potential energy, stop the cart, expand, and make that cart speed back up. So if this is at three seconds, and this, this is the calculation that I had you do down below, you're going to move back 0.1 second. So I move back to like 2.9, and I'm going to have a data point. And then I'm going to move forward 3.1, and I'm going to have another data point. So this tells me this line right here, Going, for me, it would go from 2.9 to 3.1. That's the total length of time that the plunger is in contact with the wall. So it's going to take a tenth of a second to compress that spring and a tenth of a second to make that spring expand. Because here's what y'all want to do. Y'all want to have data point here, data point here, data point here, data point here. And what y'all want to do, because you've been drilled for 12 years to connect the dots, Y'all want to do this. You want to go like this and like this. Okay? But here's the problem. If you draw this, it looks like the spring was in contact with the wall for about three seconds. Okay? Did it take <coughs> three seconds for it to slow down, stop, and speed back up? No. It took like two tenths of a second. That's all it took. Two tenths of a second. So that's why you've got to skew these points. Now again, here's the frustration. But you're going, Mr. Burkham, I don't know what the velocity is down here. You're right. Okay, guess what? We don't know what the Milky, the entire mass of the Milky Way galaxy is either. We kind of got a pretty good idea. Okay, we're missing 70% of the mass of the universe because we don't know where all the dark matter is. That's a whole embarrassing story, but we'll get into that later. So it's like you think you're not you think you're missing data trying to explain how you're missing 70% of, of our universe. That's embarrassing. Okay. So, but what you do though is you know you've got a couple of points here. So you kind of know what the velocities are. Now, think your way through this. On the return trip, 
when is the cart going fastest? When it first leaves the wall. As soon as it leaves the wall, because as soon as it leaves the wall, what's it going to start to do? Slow down. Now, be very, 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 very careful about how you answer those questions. You have to be specific, especially when you're talking about what's going to happen at the wall. So just don't tell me, well, uh, like when is it speeding up? Just don't say, well, at the wall. Okay. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that happen at the wall. The spring has to get compressed. The spring has to expand. It has to hit the wall. All of that good stuff. So be specific when you're answering the question. Now, some of you are going, well, how do I find the area? Well, let me, let me just kind of show you the easiest way to do that. Okay, so let's say yours looks something like this. <coughs> Here's the easiest thing to do. Is to treat this as like a triangle, okay? Where you say, here's kind of like an average velocity. You leave some out over here, but you kind of pick that, that area over here. And so this would be like your height. And then over here, here's going to be like your width and time. And then you're going to do the same thing here. Kind of go across like this and up. And then you've got the, the width and the length of your triangle that way. Now, if you wanted to, you can get real fancy and go across and find this triangle and then add that to the rectangle. God awful amount of work, you can get the same answer. Okay? God awful amount of work. <coughs> or you can treat it as a trapezoid for that mathematical purpose. Same thing. Now, make sure, listen to me, make sure that underneath that data table, uh, there's a whole list of things that I want on that velocity time graph. Make sure you, you have done those things. Now, here's where typically I get irritated, because I tell you, label the sign of velocity and acceleration. Now, here's zero meters per second, okay? So let me tell you what not to do. Don't come in here and go, oh, uh, that's positive, negative. I have absolutely no idea what that means. I think you're talking about a battery. Okay? I don't know what that is. So if you think you have positive velocity, hey, put positive velocity. If you think you have negative acceleration, put negative acceleration. Positive and negative signs without a label mean nothing to me. I don't know what they are. Okay? Now, here's the other thing. And this is the biggest mindset that you have to get into as, you, as we get into more and more and more complex problems. You have to get out of this mindset that, well, I got an answer. People, you have to embrace this idea that is, life is not about the answer. Being successful at life is about the process. Because here's the problem. People that are not successful in life, listen, people that are not successful in life, they focus on the shortcut way to get to the end. And those are the people that are not successful. And I don't care what business you're in. So in insurance, teaching, whatever. If you're just focused on the shortcut, the shortest possible way to get to the end, you are not going to be successful. There are no simple solutions to life. My brother and I were talking about this last night. He runs our family construction company. And literally, here's his motto. You just have to be about 10% better than the competition. If you show up and you work hard and you pay attention to the little things, everything else will take care of itself. We don't have to invent the new iPhone, okay? You just have to be successful at your work, put your nose to the grindstone, pull the wagons. There aren't shortcuts. I don't care what you see on Netflix or Hollywood or whatever. The reality of life is that when you pay attention to the little things, everything else will take care of itself. So you shift from writing a number on an answer on a line, because that's what we've done. We, and as, as educators, we have done you a disservice for 12 years, because we've taught you to focus on the answer. Life is about the process. As, as soon as you start to pay attention to the process, everything else will take care of itself. So, like when I, when I show you, hey, I want to see how you calculated your displacement. I know how you did it. That's not the point. I, I want to see how you got your velocities, because everybody's velocities calculations are going to be different. So those two columns where it says displacement and velocities, if all I see are numbers, they, they, they mean nothing to me. I'd have, they, it means nothing. Don't even bother to write it down. I want to see that process, okay? 
<sighs> now, does anyone have any questions at all? Anything you want clarification mm -hmm. on? Right, wrong, indifferent? Anything at all? Felix, Could my man, go? talk to me. Could we go over 15? What's 15? Uh, it says that since force equals last times accelerate. I like that. Okay, look. So look at this. So here's the deal. You have F equals MA, right? So what's what's the M represent? Mass. Now, is mass a vector quantity or a scalar quantity? Scalar vector. Scalar, why? Would it make any sense to say, oh, I have a mass of five kilograms north? No. So that means your mass is always positive, right? Now, is acceleration a vector quantity? Yes. Yeah? Which means this could be positive or negative. So look at, look at this. If I have a positive mass, which mass is always going to be positive, and if I have a negative acceleration, guess what? I have to have a negative, negative force. I've got a positive acceleration, I have to have a positive force. So look at this. When this thing is rolling, what's the sign of my acceleration? Negative. So guess what? What's the, what's the sign of my force? Negative. That's pretty small, right? Now, here's another universal truth. Whenever your velocity time graph slope changes, that means you change your acceleration. What do you have to do to change your acceleration? Change the, it rhymes with horse, force. So the only way you can change the slope on a velocity time graph is if you change the force, because the force alters the acceleration, which then alters the slope on the graph. So the reason this changes is because we're generating a completely different force at this point, because it hit the wall. What would this graph look like if we just pushed the cart and let it roll without hitting the wall? Like you push the cart and you miss the wall. What would it do? Just approach zero. Yeah, it would just keep going down like this, because you never changed the force. It would just roll and roll and roll. Okay? Phoenix, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Once, twice, or forever hold your peace. All right. So, and I swear to God, I'm going to offer a class in statement. I don't know how many times I have to, put, I have to read these statements. Okay? Just pay attention when you staple it, like the name is on the front and you staple it in the top left corner. That's all I ask. It's not a complicated deal. And, it's, and this is going to sound sexist, but I have the data to back it up. 99% of the time, it's guys that screw it up. <laughs> hey, no, no, this is the, that is Honest God's true story. It's like yesterday on the donations, I have count any, taught any number of entire families of kids. There was like 10 times. The sister had the sisters donated, but the brothers didn't. And I called him out on Facebook, and I said, "Seriously, felt step up to the plate here." Yeah. And then I put hashtag guys live on the earth too. So. Link of interesting Facebook. That's not bad. Okay. All right. So shut that down, and here we go. Uh, today we're so today we're going to do the graphical graphical addition vectors. Easy for me to say. And then tomorrow we're going to do vectors with trig, and then we'll review on Thursday, and then you got to test on Friday. Okay, so that's the schedule. So plan your social calendar accordingly. Okay, now, with this all idea of graphical addition of vectors, the beauty of physics is that more so than any other science, it's a visual subject. Okay? So, and, and physicists like to say, okay, hey, what's happening? Okay, hey, you know, two galaxies are going to fly. Okay, that's kind of cool. What's going to happen? Or, you know, two bowling balls collide. Okay, hey, what's going to happen? <laughs> fast? So, you know, unlike chemistry, even though I love to teach chemistry, everybody says, oh, here, class, let's, let's draw a water molecule. And you put an O with a line and then your H's, okay? And you all have this perception that you know, water molecules have little sticks that hold the oxygen and the hydrogen together like little connects toys. Okay, on, but it's just, they're just really, really tiny because it's, no. Okay, if you're to actually, if you could look at a hydrogen or water molecule, you'd be horribly disappointed because what you'd see if you could, you'd see a tiny, tiny dot, which is the oxygen, and then you have an even smaller dot, which is the hydrogen and the hydrogen, okay? 
And then you'd see a space filled with electrons that you can't see anyway because they're traveling close to the speed of light. So here's the anomaly with water or anything. There's really nothing to see because 99% of the mass is located in the proton, is in the nucleus. You really can't see that because that's like a point mass. And electrons are just flying all over the place. You really can't see them, but they take up space because they're moving so fast. So even though in chemistry you talk about these, and everybody has this perception that this is a, oh, this is what molecules look like. We don't know. No. They're separated by, on relative scale, huge distances, and they're not connected by little sticks. Okay? So just get that out of your mind, even though we represent it that way. And biology is even worse. Oh, here's a cell. Okay. What's the mitochondria you do? It's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse. Oh. No. <laughs> and then you color it, right, and make it look like a pizza. Did y'all do that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. We don't want to even get into, you know, DNA and all that good stuff, because that's completely jacked up, too. Um, well, it is. I'm just telling you. Okay. So, with the graphical addition of vectors, and, we're, and, and physicists, we can use this process in anything. That's a vector quantity. Displacement, velocity, acceleration, momentum, uh, magnetic field lines, gravitational field lines, the whole smash. And it allows us to basically visualize what's going to happen using arrows. And it's kind of cool when you go, oh, okay. Now, so here's what I've got to do, is that I've got to convince you all that you, that you know how to do this intuitively. I just have to convince you that you know how to do it and to think through the process, okay? So here's the first operating rules that exist, okay? Up to this point, we've defined everything in terms of just positive and negative. One side's positive, the other one's negative, which is cool if we lived in a purely one-dimensional world where everything existed along like one plane of a number line, okay? We'd rather boring because you're like trapped in there like, oh my god, I can't get out, okay? And you can only move this way or you can only move that way. So in reality, life's much more complex. So a lot of times it isn't just a straight x and y axis. It's also what's ha happening like in a three-dimensional realm. So what we're going to do is that now we're going to introduce angles into this deal. So rule number one, so that everybody's always on the same page, <coughs> is that the positive x-axis is always going to be zero degrees. Okay, That's it. Always zero. That's it. And every angle is going to be measured counterclockwise from this x-axis. So this means this is going to be 90, 180, 270. Now, for those of you that have done your math, we can also talk <coughs> about <coughs> quadrants. So this is the first, third, fourth. Beautiful. <coughs> now, Angles are never negative. So like if you want a vector over here like this, don't measure this angle and say, oh, that's negative 40. Okay? You've got to measure all the way around from here, and you would say, oh, that's 320 degrees. So you will have never have negative angles. Now the reason that we do this is because if you, know, you say, hey, I got an angle of 110 degrees. Okay, well, that means no matter what, I'm going to measure here around at 110 degrees. That's where that vector is going to lie. I'm not going to go from here and go, oh, I'm going to measure 110 degrees around from straight up. Now, if, you, if you're a pilot, you change the system. Pilots actually call it zero degrees north in terms of navigation. They make zero degrees north and go around counterclockwise from that. We're not pilots. We're physicists. We'll figure it out. OK, got that idea. We're cool. OK. Alright, so we're going to look at a simple example. So we're going to have a tug of war. Okay? So we're going to have uh, Mary pulling this way, right? With a force of uh, 20 newtons. Now, if I just tell you that Mary is pulling with a force of 20 newtons, is that, is that a vector quantity? No. No. Why not? It's not direction. direction. All I know is that she's pulling with the force of 20, which is impressive. Don't get me wrong. Okay? It's impressive. 
But that's like saying, hey, let's meet for dinner at noon. Okay, where? I, you know, noon. Okay, that's where we're going to meet. But I don't know where we're going to meet. So if I just tell you that force, Mary is pulling with a force of 20 newtons, not enough information. But if she's pulling in this direction, what's the angle going to be? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to say, okay, force Mary is 20 newtons at zero degrees. Okay, now it's a vector quantity. Okay, now it's a vector quantity. Now, we're going to have McGriddle, force McGriddle, like G, he's going to be pulling with a force of 15 newtons. Okay? Are you using your pinky toe? What? Your hands are slippery from the grease. Yeah, the grease. grease. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. Talk about rules, man. Okay. So I got 15 newtons. Now, again, what do I have to have? Direction. Direction. At 180 degrees. Okay? So it's simple. Force McGregor is pulling this way, Force Mary is pulling this way, right? So, Hunter, what's going to happen? Mary is going to pull your across the y axis. Okay? With how much force? Five newtons. Okay, so everybody agree Mary's going to pull in this direction with a net force of five newtons at zero degrees. Everybody cool with that? Now, you all just did the graphical addition of vectors using the tip to tail method. And you're going, oh no, we didn't miss work yet. We're seniors in high school. That's way too nerdy. We, we can't do that. Come on. You know. No, you all just did it. And this is what I'm telling you. You all know this process. I just have to convince you that you know this process. Now, so when you have diagrams like this, and you're going to draw a lot of diagrams like this, especially with forces, but you can use them on momentum, displacement, velocity, whatever. This is what's known as a free body diagram. Okay? So on a free body diagram, what you're doing is that you draw all the forces, displacements, whatever they are, from a common center. We will do these a lot, especially when we get into forces. You will do these a lot, okay? So if I say, hey, draw a free body diagram, you treat the object as like a point mass, and you draw all of the forces or vectors or whatever at it. This is not vector addition. This is just making, getting an idea of what's going to happen. If you're going to be an engineer, you're going to take a class called statics, and you're going to take an 18-week course of dealing with nothing but three dimensional vector diagrams and load-bearing walls and things like that. Okay? You're going to hate these, by the way, from this time. Okay, so here's what you do in this process. And the beauty of this process is it is the same every time. Okay? There's no variation on the theme. And if you follow the steps, number one, it's logically going to make sense. And you're going to go, oh, here we go. It's the same thing every time. So the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to have like an x and y axis. Okay? This is the view of using graph paper because you already have these on an x and y axis. So the first thing I'm going to do, we'll go ladies first. So I'm going to draw force Mary, which is going to be 20 newtons at 0 degrees. You somehow want to label the vectors because what you're doing is that you are graphically trying to show what's happening. That you have to label the vectors. Because uh, if you just draw an arrow, it's like, okay, cool, you can draw an arrow. Brilliant, okay? No, you have, this is about conveying information. <clears throat> now, this first one's going to be relatively simple. But imagine at the end of this vector, now this is a whole new X and Y system. So now we're going to draw force McGriddle, okay? So, from, from the end of Mary's vector, we're going to draw force McGriddle back this way. Okay? Which is going to be 15 newtons at 180 newtons. Now, here's the most important thing, and this is what you're looking for. This is the ultimate end game, is what we call the resultant. The resultant is the net effect of these vectors. Okay? So, here you're going, okay, well, what actually happened? So here's the deal. This is why I've got 
you know, on your paper, and this is going to be a horrible kangaroo, and don't pass judgment on me, okay? Because I just feel it's not. Oh, that was bad. Even by my standards, that was bad. Okay. So, there's the kangaroo. Okay. It looks like a big rat, but oh well. So, it's kangaroo. So, here's how you always remember this last step is that you do the RU step. So, the RU stands for on the resultant, you draw it from the origin out. Okay? The resultant is from the origin out. So, what you do is you come back to where you started and you draw it from the end out to wherever the last vector is. And you're going to label this the result. So, in this case, my resultant is going to be 5 newtons at 0 degrees. So here's why you draw it from the origin out. If you draw it from the end of the vector back to the origin, that's going to be 5 newtons at 180 degrees. So you would say, Mary's pulling with the force of 20 newtons, McGriddle's pulling with the force of 15, but McGriddle is still going to win and it's still going to go in, in his direction. No, that doesn't make any sense. This is why you draw that result from the origin out to wherever you end up. There is no deviation to that whatsoever. You, the rue is always the last step. Origin out. Okay? No exceptions whatsoever. Got it. Okay? And this is why I said you all know how to do the graphical <coughs> of vectors. You just don't know that you do. Now, <coughs> let's change it up a little bit. So, here's a soccer ball, right? And I'm going to have Hunter kick the ball this way. So, force Hunter. It's going to be uh, 20 newtons at 0 degrees. Okay? Nice. Cool. Okay. Now, at the same time, Bree is going to kick the ball. So, here's force Bree. With the force of 15 newtons at 90 degrees. Okay, so imagine this. I'm just kicking the ball this way. At the same time, Bree is kicking the ball this way. Okay? Got it? Now, what's the ball going to do? Put that way. Yeah. Michael, what's this? Um, back kind of like this. Now, yeah. closer to Hunter, closer to Bree. Why? You're right. Why are you right? Why is it going to go closer to here? Because he's exerting a more bigger force. <coughs> Beautiful. This vector is going to be longer than this vector is. Okay? That's it. So, here's the deal. Is, is a chance that the ball is going to go up like this? No. It's not going to go down like this. Okay? You know the ball is going to go somewhere in a path like this. Okay? So, when you draw it like this, What's this called? What's this diagram? Brian, start with free body. Free body diagram. Okay, this is not tip to tail. This is just a sketch of what's happening. So, but it's the exact same process. So we're going to draw hunters first. So here's our X Y system. So I'm going to draw force hunter, which is 20 newtons at zero degree. Now imagine me cutting off. Bree's vector and drawing it here. Okay? So, what you're going to do, you're going to use protractor and ruler, that's what you should have. So, I'm going to go here, point, make my mark at 90 degrees, and then you're going to, you would actually measure whatever that scale is, and you're going to draw that vector. Okay, so here's force three. Now, where do I draw my result? From the Oh, out. I'm not going to draw it back like this. Because if you draw it back like this, it's like saying, hey, if we're going to kick the ball this way, you're going to kick the ball this way, but the ball's actually going to go back down this way. Which just doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? So, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to draw this line, and I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be the direction of the ball. And then, you're going to take a protractor, and you're going to measure this angle right here, and say let's and let's say that uh, I don't know, 24 newtons at 30 degrees. 
So here's my result. Whatever length this is, work backwards on a scale, and then this angle at 30 degrees. Bit, now, here's another way that you can think of this, okay? Here's another way that you can think of this. Vonda goes off on a journey, okay? Vonda's off on a journey of, of self-enlightenment, okay? So, she walks 20 miles in this direction, zero degrees. Then, she turns and she walks 15 miles in this direction. And she's going, wow. I'm completely lost, okay? And I don't have my water bottle or my cell phone. This is bad, okay? Now, Olivia says, wow, I gotta go find my friend Vonda. So, the path that Olivia would take to get to Vonda would be to walk 24 miles at a heading of 30 degrees. So, if you wanna think about this in terms of walking, <coughs> What the resultant tells you is if you were starting at the beginning, where would you go to get to wherever this person ended up? Okay? That's the other way that you can view the result. Okay? Cool with this. Now, if you did the last one, this is as complicated as it gets. So let's go back to the soccer analogy. We go, okay, there's a soccer ball, right? And uh, we're going to have force Felix providing a force of uh, 20 newtons at, uh, what's your angle, Felix? Give me an angle. 60. 60 degrees. Okay? It's aggressive, 60 degrees. I like that. Okay? Uh, Mayor, uh, no. Bonda, what, what's your force? Bigger or smaller than 20? Uh, bigger. A lot bigger? Yeah. 40? Yeah. Ah, go big or go home. Okay? So here's force Vonda. What's your angle? It's got to be bigger than 90. Um, 70. <laughs> <laughs> 100. 100. <laughs> 100. <laughs> it's got to be bigger than 90. 70. <laughs> You were under pressure. I think you, I think you were still thinking the force. You, what you really wanted to say 70, I think, is the value of the force, right? So, 100? Yes. Okay, all right. That's bigger than 90. If not, I want you to be my, my bookkeeper. Okay. So, so this is 100 degrees. <coughs> that was the funniest thing I've ever thought of. Okay. <laughs> So, so here's the question. What's, the, what's going to be the path of the ball? Someone in here? Yes. Closer to 100? Yes. <laughs> right? Or closer to 60? 100. Why? <laughs> That's the bigger force. It's going to be more dominant with this vector, right? So it might be something you know, something in here. Is it going to be anything down here? No. no. Okay? It's not going to be anything over here. It's not going to be anything. It has to be somewhere in this gap. Right? Everybody cool? This is a free body diagram. This is not the tip to tail method. But it gives you an idea of what's going to happen. Now, we're going to start over from scratch. So, uh, So, here's this x and y system. So, here's force Felix, and again, here's the process. You're going to take your protractor, which you all should have, and you're going to go over, yours was 40 degrees, no, yours was 60, right Felix? Yeah. Okay? So, there's my 60 degree mark, I'm going to draw this vector, okay? Based that out, here's force Felix. So this is 60 degrees, right? Here we go. Now, for Vonda's, this is a whole new X and Y coordinate system. 
So it's like I'm starting over from scratch. The only thing that I'm going to use Felix's vector for at this point is to know where I draw Vonda's vector. Okay? Sounds like a children's story. The story of Vonda's vector. Okay. It's kind of a cute story. It'd be a really nerdy children's story. It's like, you want your kid to grow up and study physics? Here. Here. Timmy, let's read the story of Vonda and her vector. Okay. So, when you make... When you measure the 110 degree angle, don't put your protractor like this and measure around 110 that way. It's defined as from a positive x-axis. So I'm going to put this here, okay? I'm going to come around like this at 110 degrees, and Vonda said, hey, we're going to go big on this deal. I said, okay, Vonda. So I'm going to have this, okay, and that, okay, and then we've got this. So here's force Vonda at 100 degrees. Good so far. So it's last step. Result. Rue. Result from Rue. origin out. So I'm going to come in here and let's say that's a little bit past there. So I'm going to go doink. So I have a technical term, doink, and then another doink. Okay? Now, here's the most important thing. When you measure this, this has to be measured back from this positive x-axis to this vector. Okay? Don't measure the internal gap. That's not it. It has to be from this positive x-axis. So it's like Mad Max goes, oh, I'm going to walk here. Then he turns and goes, oh, I'm going to walk here. And Matt says, oh, I must go give Mad Max money for the solar campaign. So what we're telling here is what direction Matt has to go to find Max. Okay? So if you tell him this angle, this is the direction he's going to add. Okay? You need to tell him from the positive x-axis because that's where Matt's going to start. Okay. Got the process. Okay. So stop that. Let me hand out the assignment. So, let me kind of get you through this assignment. The first five things that you have to do are the easiest five points you will ever earn in this class. Unlike my, my first block, do not make this step difficult. First off, I have to explain this, do not draw your vectors here, okay? Do them on another sheet of paper. Some people like to use graph paper because you always have like an X and Y coordinate system. Okay? If you want to use plain paper, you can. If you want to use notebook paper, you can. If you want to use a sheet of copper and like etch it into the copper, it's aggressive, but you can do that. Before. It's going to be tough to grade. Okay. So assuming that you're using graph paper or something like that, you're going to have five vectors, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, do not make this complicated. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw each vector. Again, which usually isn't a problem, but here it is. So here's what I want you to do. Here's your x and y coordinate system. You're going to come out here, and you're going to draw a line 5 centimeters at 0 degrees. I don't realize this is mundane. Like I said, don't fight it. It's the easiest five points you will ever get in this class. Don't fight it. And the reason I had you do this is this. One year I was behind, and I skipped like the graphical addition of vectors and went straight to the trig function. It was an absolute train wreck, okay? Absolute train wreck. You guys have to get used to drawing this stuff. It's not tough, but it does require some care and precision because you have to draw these exact. Now, here's what you don't do. Draw this line five centimeters long. You have to put arrows on them because you have to indicate which direction that it's going. Draw this to five centimeters, but then don't put the arrow on the end of the five centimeter mark. Put that arrowhead back like this so that you still have the length of, the, of this being five centimeters. So then you're just going to label this vector A. Then you're going to draw vector B, vector C, vector D. If you want to draw these all from like the same origins, fine. Now, here's where it's going to get a little bit complicated. On number, on vector D, you've got six centimeters at 250 degrees. Does your protractor measure around to 250 degrees? No. no. So what are you going to do? 
or subtraction, whatever you want to, however you want to view it, right? So you're going to start here at zero degrees. So this point gets you to 180. So then what are you going to measure? 130. What? Yeah, 1B equals. You're going to measure. Never mind. <laughs> want to do that math? No. About 70. <laughs> How about 70? 70. 70. Well, is it the three day weekend? Did y'all forget math? Yes. Yes. And seriously. Oh, less more than 90. 70. <laughs> 250. 130. <laughs> okay. So, this case is 180. We're going to do 70, right? So, we're going to come around here. Doink. Measure 70 degrees. Then you're going to draw that. Boom. Put your arrow head on it. Boom. There you go. Good with that. Easy points. Don't fight. Easy points. Easy money. Now, when you get down to number two, we're going to add vector A to vector A. So again, this one's simple. Here's your X and Y system. You're going to draw vector A. Boom. Here you go. Simple as that. And then from the end of vector A, you're going to add vector A again. So here's vector A, here's vector A. So this is like two people pulling with the same force in the same direction. So what's the result going to be? 2A. So you can draw that so you don't overlap it. So here's the result, which is going to be 10 centimeters at 0 degrees. Zero degrees. So here's what I want. On another sheet of paper, you're going to keep these numbered, so you're going to say, okay, this work camp here is number two. So I should be able to clearly look and find number two. I should see this diagram. What I want written on the sheet in this gap where it says A plus A, what I want to see here is you're going to put 10 centimeters at zero degrees. So the only thing that's going to go here is the result. That's it. Now, the next one is A plus B. A plus B is a little bit more complicated. So on number three, and, and don't let these overlap because it's a pain to grade. Keep these all separated. So you're going to have vector A. From the end of vector A, you're going to draw vector B. And then you're going to draw this result. Now, in this situation, don't just add the numbers. This is like the hypotenuse of a triangle. So you're going to take your protractor, and you're going to measure this angle. And you're going to write down whatever that angle is. Now, Vonda, here's your chance to redeem yourself on angles. Is this angle here going to be bigger or smaller than 90 degrees? Smaller. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. Maybe around 35, 40, something like that. Okay. So you're going to measure this angle, and then you're going to measure this length. And you're going to tell me, hey, this is, this is however long this is at whatever angle this is, and you're going to label that result. That's it. Okay? Any questions on the process? Michael? For that one, you, you do no, no, no. You do not touch a calculator until tomorrow. Okay? Do not touch a calculator. Tomorrow we'll do trig functions. Today, this is just pure measurement. Yes. So I like spaced out when you were. I get that the. You know, the in 25 the years of teaching, this is the first time this has happened. Really? Yes. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> uh, what would be the. Uh, when you add A and B, I know what you do to find the, the angle, but what do you do, like, for the centimeters? Yeah, you're, you're, you're just going to take your ruler and you're going to physically measure the length of this line. Okay. So it, it might be like five and a half or whatever it is. And then you're going to measure that angle and like it might be 30. So let's say you would put like five and a half centimeters at 30 degrees or whatever it is that you measure. Okay? Cool with this. Remember, this angle always has to be measured around from this positive x axis. That's the biggest thing that will screw up. Okay, I'm done. If this video, out of the goodness of my heart, even though you all were supposed to have protractors and rulers, I have some if you want to borrow them. But the test on Friday, uh-uh, you are on your own, okay? So, on another sheet of paper, okay, shut her down.